Hey everybody, I'm making cacciatore today, not chicken cacciatore like you've usually had or heard of, uh, but mushroom cacciatore. And this one is made with, um, I have oyster mushrooms on my recipe, but I also um, today have my taki mushrooms, which are also called hen of the woods. And I guess because they have kind of a chicken flavor, isn't it cool that nature invented that? Um, a plant-based version. So these are really cool. They kind of have like a um, like a floret kind of look to them. They're really cool. And um, you can get these at a lot of markets. You can use other mushrooms too, but I really love these. And they're just, I, I had washed them and kind of just separated them into little pieces. Um, so I'm gonna use that in the recipe and show you how to make this. It all comes together so well with the red sauce and um, it's something that's very hearty too. So I think you'll really enjoy it. So what I'm gonna do is start my uh, cooktop with some garlic. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do the garlic. Yeah, I'm gonna just warm this up. I'm gonna do the mushrooms first. Get a little olive oil in my pan. Okay, while that's heating up, I'm going to take the mushrooms and just add a little salt, season them with a little salt and pepper. This is the really the traditional way anyway, but we're just using mushrooms instead of chicken, which is great. And once these are kind of wet too, they'll absorb uh, the salt and pepper seasoning. Just kind of simple. And then I'm gonna dredge them in the flour and let them brown in the pan. In the meantime, while I'm waiting to get that heated up, I'm gonna chop up some garlic. Got a nice big bowl of garlic here. So, get that going. Get all of that. Yeah, that's definitely like six regular cloves of garlic because these are big. Okay. All right, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that aside a little bit, is I'm just gonna dredge the mushroom in a little flour, shaking off the excess, and put it in our pan to brown. First part. And just kind of on medium to high heat. Dredging that in the flour. Just gives it sort of a, a little coating before we add the other ingredients. The garlic will be next. Just gonna move all of this aside. And just gonna turn it a little bit. Once it starts to cook on one side for a little bit, you don't wanna overcook it, but just to get it slightly browned. And add a little more oil to that. A nice brown, crispy feel. They're just starting to lightly brown a little bit. But these have a lot of flavor. I don't know if it if I would say it tastes like chicken, but it has a really nice flavor. And it's great to if you like mushrooms, um, which I do, we love mushrooms here. Just try lots of different ones and preparing them different ways. Um, they really have so many different kinds of flavors. Some are, some are very woodsy and earthy, um, but I, I like them all. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add my garlic. All that good garlic in there. Sizzle. 
Okay, this is browning really nicely now. You can see that. Looks really good. Smells so good too. Okay, so then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna lower it a little bit, and I'm gonna add in about three quarter cup of dry white wine. And about three quarter cup of vegetable stock. And you can omit the wine, you can double up on the um, the vegetable stock, or you can uh, just substitute in a little bit of water. You wanna not add too much salt at the end because the vegetable stock can be salty. The one I have isn't too salty. It's um, better than Bouillon. I love that brand. They've got some really good vegan ones. So we're just gonna start to let that simmer. And to that, we're going to add some oregano. I've got some dried oregano and this is so cool. I love this. I got it from a little Italian market. It's organic dried oregano on the stems and it's so cute because it's like a tree but you just break off some oregano. Just kind of break it off it's really potent. It's just so, it's right from Italy um, in Sicily. And you can tell it's definitely more potent than regular oregano. But any dried oregano you have is fine. I just happen to see this and I love it. I love to use it. And I just keep it in a little bag in my cupboard and just take out what you need. And the aroma just builds and the flavors build. It's so yummy. Okay. And then I have um, some thyme. You can use dry thyme as well. I have some fresh thyme from my garden. And it smells so good. I love the smell of thyme. So we're gonna use a few sprigs of that. Let's see. This is one of my favorite herbs, so I'd love to use it. And it's got a, an earthy flavor, and the leaves are super tiny, but they're so potent. Dried thyme is great, too. Just I happen to have this herb that I've been growing in my garden for a while. And I love to use it, especially with any mushroom recipes. I think it goes really well with that. bunch of those too. And you just kind of, if you have the fresh, you just want to pull the leaves in the opposite direction. They come off pretty easily. Yeah, that's really, you can see how the mushrooms cook really nicely in that sauce. Okay, then we're going to add our crushed tomatoes. an 18 ounce jar of crushed tomatoes. Get that in here too. And let that simmer. It makes it really just a rich sauce that's very savory. Okay, so this dish has been simmering for about 20 minutes now, and it smells delicious, and I can't wait to eat it, and it looks fantastic. So I'm gonna just serve some up for myself in a little bowl, and have it with some bread. I can top this over pasta, um, or serve it with bread and just enjoy it curled up in a, on a cold night. I have this beautiful board here from my grandmother. I love to serve bread on it. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of that and dip it in the sauce. 
Mm, I love the smell. You can really smell the garlic and, and all of the herbs in here. Mmm. So savory and hearty and comforting. I'm sure you will love my vegan version of this classic Italian dish.